it's Susan here from Komori no Hime Cosplay, and today we're going to be making a platelet costume from the anime Cells at Work. We're going to be doing the shirt, the hat, the bag, and the flag. For platelets hats, I'm starting with just a plain white baseball cap. I got this from my local AC Moore, and I think it was like $3 without using a coupon on it, so you could bring the cost down even more if you use a coupon. And now I'm just going to take a pencil and pencil on the platelet kanji so I have some guidelines for when it comes time to paint. Then take some black acrylic paint and a small paintbrush and paint the kanji onto the front of the cap. One thing I should point out is that the reference for the character in the show, uh, the little stroke right there, is at the end, whereas when I looked it up in a Japanese translation, not sure how well this is going to show up, a Japanese translation site, it's more towards the middle of the kanji, so that's why I did that in my version. Um, I don't know why the anime and manga has it slightly over, but since this was from a translation uh, service that I trust, I decided to go that route. For Platelet's shirt, I just got an oversized white cotton t-shirt. I got a white t-shirt because I couldn't find any that were in the right shade of blue, so we're going to dye it, though before we dye it, it's going to be washed, so that'll take out any chemicals that may be left in it from the factory. To dye the shirt, I'm using Rit dye in aquamarine, and it is a salt-activated dye. Personally, I like liquid dyes a bit better than powdered, just because I find them to be a lot easier to use, and they're less likely to be splotchy if you miss a spot. So, yep, I'm just dyeing it in a bucket of warm water, and stirring it regularly with an old chopstick. One thing I should mention if this is your first time dyeing material is you want to be very careful that the dye doesn't accidentally dye anything else while you're trying to dye the shirt. So you may have noticed that I had a towel underneath the bucket so in case anything splashed it wouldn't get on the floor. And as you can see the bucket that I used has a blue ring around it now from the dye. And when rinsing out the shirt I made sure to rinse it out in a stainless steel sink so that it wouldn't stain anything else in the house. Wash the shirt one more time to remove any excess dye. And this is what it looks like after it's been dyed. It ended up being a little splotchy. I probably should have stirred it a bit more than I did, but it will work for the costume. So now we're going to make the accessories. To make platelets flag, I took a rectangle of yellow cotton and hemmed all along the edges. Now if you want a no-sew version of this you could use a fabric like felt which doesn't fray and then just take your dowel, wrap the material around and hot glue it into place. What I'm going to be doing for sewing is I'm going to sew around the edge there and up so that the dowel can be removed. For the design on the flag, I just painted it on using some bright red acrylic paint. Slide the dowel into the channel we made earlier, and now you have a flag. If you want the costume to be completely no-sew, you can stop here with the shirt, hat, and flag complete. If you want to do a bit of sewing for this project, continue watching, and we will be making the messenger bag. To make platelets bag, I'm going to be using some more of the yellow cotton that I used for the flag. And if you want to make your bag extra sturdy, you can apply some interfacing to the pieces. I didn't have enough interfacing, so a couple of these pieces are doubled and then just sewn together to make them a bit stiffer. But we're going to start by cutting two rectangles for the sides of the bag and one rectangle for the bottom of the bag. Now we're going to place the smaller side rectangles on top of the larger bottom rectangle and we're going to sew them together 
at the ends. Putting right sides together, we're going to match up the bag side pieces and the bag bottom piece and sew it onto the bag front piece. Sew on the back of the bag so that we now have the base bag shape and we're going to hem along the edge. Repeat the process a second time to create the bag lining. Cut two larger yellow rectangles and these are going to become the flap on the bag. Putting right sides together, sew the bag flap pieces together along the sides, leaving one of the longer ends open so that it can be turned right side out. Turn the flap right side out and we're going to top stitch all along the edge. Sew the flap to the back of the bag. Insert the lining into the bag and now we're going to sew the lining to the base bag all along the edge. To make the strap of the bag, we're going to cut a very long rectangle out of the yellow fabric. Now this is one you're definitely going to want to apply interfacing or uh, I'm using flannel, just something to the back of it to make it more stiff because this is what's going to be supporting all the weight of whatever's put in the bag. Then we're going to take both of the ends fold the edge inward and sew it into place. Fold the strap piece in half and we're going to sew it together along the long side, leaving the ends open to create a tube. Turn the strap right side out and top stitch all along the edges. Sew the straps onto either side of the bag in a crisscross pattern. Here's what it looks like with the completed bag. And with that, Platelets Cosplay is done. For more cosplay tutorial videos, please subscribe and thank you very much for watching.